still powered by Noventrix any day, any time. We're going to talk more today. We have a special guest here. She goes by the name to Miss Sylvia Teria Tete. She is a co-founder of, uh, of, of the Women Who Farms in Africa. We're going to know more about um, what really, really that goes into Women Who Farms in Africa. But then before then, if you're watching us at the moment, try as much as possible to also go up on our social media handles, like all our pages, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel, Tell a Friend to Tell a Friend. This is the place whereby you get education. This is where you get informed about people that are doing great works out there. And I'm sure through that is going to inspire me, it's going to inspire you into the world of entrepreneurship as well. Not just into the world of entrepreneurship, but in anything that you want to pursue in life, I'm sure with this um, encouragement that you get from all these people that are doing great works out there, it's going to motivate you and take you to another level. So if you just join us, this is Lincoln Talk and it's been powered by Naventrix uh, Media. And this is where we're going to have that dialogue with our guest up on the show today. You're welcome, Miss Sylvie. Thank you. Yes, um, we are honored to have you up on Lincoln Talk because it's, uh, it's, it's really with great inspiration to have such people that are doing great works out there to really come to the forefront to uh, tell us about your, 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 your success story. Not just your success story, but also your ups and downs that you have been through with what you are trying to push, that agenda that we are going to talk about in a bit. So first and foremost, let me start from yourself. Why did you decide to choose farming? Okay, so for me, it started with farming. You know, my grandmother was a cocoa farmer because now she's 100 years old, so she can't go to the farm and be farming. And then my mom started farming and farming was a source of income to the family, to her and then her other siblings in taking care of their education. So it got to a point whereby she realized she couldn't do the farming business and pursue education at the same time. So that was that crossroad. She needed to decide between pursuing education and then selling. And then she had to let go of um, education so she let go of education at the age of 17 years old you know my mom had that great zeal and passion of becoming a legislator like a lawyer like and then gradually she'll move into the parliament house to help contribute her quota to the nation but that was where it all came to an end so for me um women who farm when i got the opportunity to come together with other women to form an organization that sees to educate women about the importance of farming, if they are to take farming to the next level, that is thinking of farming as a business, not just doing it on a smaller level to feed just their community, which is a good job, but if they can move to that extra level, they don't just feed their family, but they move to feeding their community. And it also, if, if they are able to move from just feeding themselves to their community, then it becomes a business. They'll be able to have enough income to support their children, which is vital because, you know, there's this um, vicious cycle of poverty when it comes to rural farmers and farmers because the woman, like my mom, my mom's story, her mom was a farmer. It wasn't enough. She went into farming. It wasn't enough to take care of her education. So she has to just um, quit um, pursuing her educational dreams and then assist her mom in terms of farming. So with that cycle, if your child doesn't go to school, it affects the income that comes into the family. Then it affects even the ability to access quality health care. So it goes that round and round and round. And that's something as women who farm, we are passionate about. Uh, passionate about educating women especially because you realize that in Africa about 60 to 80 percent of women are involved in agriculture at the primary level so if we want to change the status quo of hunger whereby we have more than 80 um, 3 million people who go hungry and one out of every child if you, one out of every four children you meet goes hungry and people are dying of hunger then we need to see to it that Africa is not seen as a place whereby when people come, they're unable to take care of themselves in terms of feeding themselves. 
Okay, so how long have uh, has this organization that you are a co-founder, how long has it been in existence? Um, we started, um, we came together last year on the 26th of August. You know, Cornell, there's an organization, I would say that's a parent organization, um, Cornell Alliance for Science. They organize, um, they do have a yearly fellowship program whereby they bring together scientists, farmers and communicators together to okay. educate them and then to prep them in terms of some of the viable technologies available to assist these farmers to increase yield, to help um, feed the continent. So um, they organized, because of this institution, we met last year in Cornell University um, and that's when we started as Women Who Farm. Um, women Who Farm is made up of, um, the co-founders are three amazing women farmers. We have Ruamisu Mashumba, she's a commercial farmer in Zimbabwe. We have Susanna Piri, who is um, a smallholder farmer. So okay. because we have, a co it's, it's, it's a collection, you know, we, we have that um, variety. We have a commercial farmer, we have a smallholder farmer. So we understand the plight of both the commercial what goes on in the commercial farms and then what goes on on the small farms too okay that that's beautiful so um i i, I know and in recent times um ladies want to rise to a, a place whereby they, they will tell you i want to work in the office i want to be like it's made mention of your mom wanting to be a lawyer and all that you know so mm -hmm. at what point did this whole idea uh come into your mind that listen i want to take up farming and what are some of the things that you considered that you were going, you were, like you were taking in there to become successful with that idea of becoming a farmer? Okay, so for me, what I do is um, we just grow crops to feed ourselves. Ours is not a, a year. Other women, because I don't represent just myself and I'm representing other women, I'm going to okay. talk for all the women in the group. So I know that for um, Rura, farming, she, she studied farming, like she studied agribusiness. She studied agriculture okay. in school. And her mom, old, her mom and dad had a big piece of land. They had a big land. And okay. after schooling, she schooled in England. So after schooling, she realized that the form of farming over there is different from the form of farming we do in Africa with all the machinery and then the technologies available to them. So when she came back to Africa, she, she had, you know, that change, that mindset. Now farming is no longer something that if you go out there, they are not doing it on a small, on a small scale, or they are not doing it on, with the mentality just to feed just themselves. So she, she took it to the next level, whereby she started helping her family. Her dad's, her, she, she had land available to her. So mm -hmm. she started growing peas and gradually she, she was recognized by other institutions. So they do come to her to contract her to go and then export to Europe. At the same time with Susanna, it's a family business. So okay. you go into it as, 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 as that. So, you know, you don't have the option to be like, you want to go into A or B. And exactly. with that mentality, that's how come it all came about. Okay, so since you are the co-founder of, uh, you're the co-founder at Women Who Farms in Africa, you're speaking generally for every member of, of, of your organization, right? Yes, yes, please. Okay. So um, what has been the market values for you people in the organization? Has there been a moment whereby production has really increased, it's, it's giving you guys income in your pockets, and are you really, really uh, benefiting for going into farming as an organization? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> farming, is, farming is lucrative. Farming okay. is really lucrative. And as I said earlier, unless you consider the entire value chain and you have that business mentality in mind. If you have that business, the entrepreneurial mindset, it changes the whole thing. You know, okay. that's the silver line. So okay. with, if you do have that in mind, 
you, you, you are able to keep records. And you know, most people, the issue with farmers, most farmers is because they don't see farming as a business, there is no record keeping. And if okay. there's no record keeping, you don't know what comes in and what goes out. Because you need to know your cost. Strike it against your revenue. Then you'll be, and you don't know what goes into it. And then the process you get out of it, you'll not be able to move from just one acre land to another land. So if you take it at a business, you can even start with a small piece of land. But if you have the business mentality, record keeping becomes key. Marketing becomes key. Adding value to the commodity you are selling becomes key. Okay. And that's when you, you, you make process. Yeah. That's beautiful. Okay, so to, the, the, to our ladies out there who are jobless at the moment that uh, are willing to become uh, entrepreneurs like yourself and, and, and your, your, your members that are up in the organization, what word of advice do you have for them? Because I know farming is now, uh, it's, it's not even now, farming has always been the, 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 the source of, you know, uh, you know, income for a lot of people that are, who have been able to venture into it. But then the generation that we have don't really consider that as, you know, a, a money uh, gaining center. You understand? Mm -hmm. So what advice do you have for our ladies that are out there who are dying to be air hostess, who are dying to be, you know, whatever they want to be, but yet still these opportunities are not made available. But then when you talk about farming, there is always an opportunity any day, any time. What advice do you have for them? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, if I, my advice to them will go back to our mode of education where we find ourselves, especially in Africa. You see, when you go to school, you are being told that right after school, you need to sit for a white collar job. Somebody must employ you for you to be able to make money. So my advice to young people is we go to school to learn and to acquire knowledge. And that knowledge is supposed to guide you in life in terms of what you want to be. So if you go to school and you study, it's, you are supposed to get an insight and know how to go about things. If you go to school, you know you, there's something called timekeeping. You know, if you've been to the university, you know there's lecture starts at 7.30. So when it comes to punctuality, you will become punctual. Those are the basic skills we learn in school. And those skills are transferable. We should be able to transfer our skills to other places. So if a young lady listening to me, farming is really lucrative, farming is a business, wherever you find yourself. We are in COVID times, it's abnormal times. The white color jobs are not paying any longer. Like now in Africa, when COVID came in and there was um, total shutdown of the economy and everything went quiet. Farmers, I, I, I was, we spoke with one of our women in Uganda, yeah, yeah, Uganda. And she said for the first time, farmers were considered as essential workers. That's okay. how important it is for farmers to be considered as essential workers because without food, people are home and they need to eat. But other people were sent home to, to go until further notice. So if you are thinking about pursuing, pursuing anything, don't wait. You can be an entrepreneur by thinking about others. In thinking about others, you produce to feed others. And in feeding others, you make money for yourself. Okay, so um, I want to know this before I let go of you. It's your organization looking at people investing into the farming business or individually, are you uh, and your members, are you also looking at people coming on board to invest? And what kind of investment are you looking at? Okay, so for women who um, um, so we are looking out for organizations that are interested in impacting women through education because we believe um, when, when we started in terms of even farming, where to get information from becomes difficult, who to go to becomes difficult. And we saw it that it's an opportunity because we have these individual struggles in terms of a common space to acquire the basic skills, it is essential for us to collate information and put it at a place whereby new beginners, young women um, can just go there and they'll have information about how to go about farming, the needed skills they need 
so that they'll be mm -hmm. able to venture into it. So we are looking for institutions, organizations that are so passionate about impacting women farmers in Africa. And then um, we are also looking out for institutions that are working with women, women farmers, because we know we have great content content available and we have something to give to people out there so if they can partner with us in terms of um, investment any funds they have available then you'll be able to reach wide because you are targeting the entire africa um do you have any outlets that you um, your, your organization or individually you do adverts on uh, your farm product okay so for women who farm um we don't, what, what we are so, we are into educating women, creating that platform to educating women. So um, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we are on um, LinkedIn, um, whereby we share um, resources in terms of videos. If you had to go to Facebook, um, at, um, we are Women Who Farm Africa. Okay, so um, we, we, I, myself, I will even entreat you to also try as much as possible to, you know, Come advertise on, uh, you know, link and talk show on the Naventrix okay. Media because it's one of the biggest platforms that you can have that is circulating around the world. Lots of people get the opportunity okay. to see what you are doing, not just in Ghana, but then yeah. the world at large. So maybe any investor yeah. that might be watching at that point in time can be able to, you know, just pick in yeah. your contact, you know, go into business with your organization as well. It's been an awesome um, time talking to yeah. you and getting to know more about yourself and your organization which you happen to be a co-founder uh, it's really an honor for me to really have that conversation with you thank you so much for your time and we do appreciate it